In this video, I go over setup and configuration of Fedora 29 post-installation. For setting up and configuring Fedora 29, I went ahead and made a GitHub project so you can easily run one command and configure all these things I'm about to go over. So here is the actual GitHub uh, project that has all of the things I'm about to go over in detail. Uh, there's five main things you should know the script does that I'm about to launch into, but the main things I wanted to kind of detail here is the packages it's going to install. You'll see it's installing roughly uh, 43 packages, and here is just kind of a quick breakdown of those. Most of them are compilers, so you can actually install more programs easily in the future with having to go, oh crap, I need to get this dependency. A lot of these are actually dependencies for bigger projects. A uh, couple things of note, just personal preference that I have included in here is Atom, it's a text editor. Discord, that's for game chat and things of that nature. Um, Gnome Tweak Tool for modifying the UI. Gparted for partitioning. HTOP for performance. Joe is another uh, actual terminal editor uh, that sometimes I use. Nano is my personal favorite, which I use quite a bit. Um, and net tools for like IF config. Technically, the CentOS and Fedora line just do IP space ADDR, but I, I personally like IF config better. Um, it installs an SSH server onto here. Uh, and it installs Ramina with the RDP plugin. This means I could use my Linux box to remote into my Windows boxes, which is really nice. Shutter is a really great screen cap tool. Simple screen recorders like a easier version of OBS. Steam, that's for just our games. And then uh, some Chrome compatibility for Chrome GNOME Shell. Uh, I like Chrome. I know a lot of the Linux community does not, so I did not include uh, installing Chrome with this. Uh, I figure you guys can easily just do a DNF install uh, Google Chrome. And you definitely can after running this script because I went ahead and added uh, the repositories for that. Um, and then most of this is all just for compiling uh, anything from source. So with that, let's go ahead and launch into the five things this actual main script does. You'll notice uh, it does add a lot of aliases for our terminal. So I highly recommend you coming in here and just kind of scrolling down and looking at the aliases here. So copy, move, remove, um, you know, CLS for clear. Uh, a lot of these things are really just nice, uh, quick commands to get around terminal far faster. Uh, personally, what I use quite often is the LL command for a, you know, a detailed listing of a directory. And uh, I won't get too much into here, but definitely come in here, check these out. This will make your life so much easier doing and working in terminal. The first thing the actual setup script sets up is updating your repositories so you can download Google Chrome and a variety of other ones. It also sets up RPM Fusion, the Atom repository so you can use Atom for your editor and all these will stay up to date as you do DNF upgrades while uh, updating your systems. The second thing it sets up and downloads is Dropbox and TeamViewer. These are two RPM packages that don't have a repository that I can pull from. So I went ahead and set these up to download the RPM and install these pocket packages automatically. The third thing is it installs all of the packages from through DNF. So it's already updated the repositories and it's downloaded a couple RPM packages. Well, now it actually goes through and does a DNF install of 44 packages. When you add the dependencies for these packages, it ends up being 300 and something programs that it's installing on your computer. For a complete list of everything that this is installing, please check the link below. It's fedora.packages from the GitHub project. The fourth thing it actually does is it modifies your terminal to be far smarter. What I mean by this, it, it displays everything a lot better, shows how many files are in actual directory and how much space that directory is taking up. There's also many shortcut keys that are added. So you might check your bash RSC RC file to actually check everything that has been added. But 
a variety of things have been fastly streamlined by using this modified bash RC file to make terminal a much more pleasant experience. The fifth and final thing this script does is it disables Wayland and enables Xorg. This gives us, gives us far more compatibility and it gives us the ability to screen share. Okay, to start this off, we need to open up our terminal and we're gonna run this one line command to go ahead and start all of the install of the dependencies and install all the repositories that we've gone over. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any feedback or comments, please let me know below. And if you'd like to see more tech videos, hit the subscribe button and check me out on my website, chrystitus.com.